Oh, Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness.
across the sun I believe in the Holy Spirit Our God is three in one I believe in the resurrection That we will rise again For I believe in the name of Jesus So the food distribution ministry here on this campus has been partnering with Storehouse Ministries for many years. Prior to COVID, the food ministry on this campus was really healthy. We were considered one of the larger distribution points in Cobb County at the time. Before COVID, we were allowing a family to come and get food once a month. And we averaged somewhere around 100 families a month. Like I said, it was one of the larger ones in the area. Since COVID and for partnerships with local schools, with the National Guard, with different churches, and with Storehouse, we were able to really make this grow, use the systems we had in place. And we're currently serving on average about 650 families a week. 
The week before Thanksgiving, it was closer to a thousand, and today, it being the week before Christmas, we're expecting about a thousand as well. The parking lot around us right now, an hour from distribution, already has somewhere around 100, 150 cars. We have seen God's hand over this ministry for the last 10 months. Um, you know, when we started the first week, we had enough food for, to pack and to distribute about 402 boxes of food, 402 families. To date, as we are today in December, 10 months later, we've distributed only by the grace of God, somewhere in the vicinity of 17,000 boxes. So we've reached 17,000 families uh, over the last 10 months. That is just a tremendous blessing. But you know, beyond just being able to help a physical need, this has given us an opportunity to have and to create real, authentic gospel environments. We are able to have loving and caring gospel conversations with our community. And, and I can, you know, even looking around right now, many of these cars, I've prayed with many of them. Just last week, there was a lady who came through. She said, hey, I saw you guys praying before we started. Would y'all pray for me? I was just diagnosed with cancer yesterday. And you know, this is what this ministry is about, is, is building relationship. It's allowing us to love this community in real life with real needs such as hunger, but also with real needs such as spiritual needs. We were able to pray with them, love on them, and we've de uh, developed just so many amazing relationships through these last 10 months. As things stand right now, there's a lot of uncertainty as to how hunger is going to be met in this community. You know, we are at the very edge of South Cobb County, which is a, a largely underserved and impoverished community. It's largely a working poor community. Most of the children are local schools. One is 95% uh, in our county school, 95% of families are uh, need the free and reduced lunches. The other school is 77%. So there's a great need and we just don't know what's ahead of us. But what we do know, you know, we're excited about is God keeps allowing us to serve more and more families. We're meeting more and more people and, and it's allowing us to have conversations, not just with the people in the community, but also the people are making things possible in the community. Just a couple of weeks again, uh, just for example, we had a member of the community who works in a local restaurant come to us and he said, hey, y'all doing so many good things. We'd love to partner with you to see how we can help people get out of unemployment. So when we have opportunities, we'd like to reach out to you and, and you can uh, communicate that to your constituency. And so we're really seeing how, you know, our vision at the very beginning of this ministry, you know, as he said, and, and we just kind of came together to develop this. Our vision has been, what would it look like if the life of this community intersected with the life here at the Eastside Mosaic Center? And this is what we're seeing as life of this community is intersecting here. We're seeing people served in terms of food, people served in terms of poverty, in terms of employment, but really mostly, and, and, and the, it's the most beautiful part of this, as we see people experience and see and hear explicitly the gospel proclaimed and people hear that Jesus loves them and that there is a relationship with God through Christ possible. And this is what's changing this community, honestly. Well, good morning and happy new year and welcome to the Bible teaching portion of our worship service here today at Eastside Online. We thank the Lord for your presence and we hope that as 2021 unfolds and it's easier for you to make your way to church that you will do so, then that you will join us. On this first Sunday of the new year, and as we look at a brand new year of 2021, we're going to launch a series on the parables of Jesus. We're going to do that for the next weeks and perhaps months. And today we want to look at the parable that Jesus taught about new cloth and new wineskins. Would you look in your Bibles, please, or follow along on the screen as we look at Matthew chapter 9, Verses 14 through 17. Here's the word of God. Then John's disciples came and asked him, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered, how can the guest of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved." This is one of 35 parables that the Lord Jesus taught in the Gospels. 
this particular parable is, is about a new piece of cloth being sewn to some old clothes and wine that Go new wine that goes into old wineskins. Might be good for us to refresh ourselves to exactly what a parable is. A parable is a story that teaches side by side spiritual lessons. If you look at the word peril and balo, that forms the compound word in Greek parabolo or par- parabole. And that is what a parable is. It's a parable, a para, which means parallel, side by side. And balo means to throw or to cast. So what a parable is, is Jesus throwing out some stories side by side for means of comparison. There is a practical side of the story followed by a spiritual lesson side of the story. And here in Matthew chapter 9, beginning at verse 14, Jesus illustrates in his story the following factors. In the story, he talks about a wedding, he talks about a piece of fabric, he talks about wine, and then he talks about goat skins or wine skins, animal skins. Now, in the neighborhood here of verse 14 where we started, just a couple of verses earlier, Jesus depicts himself as a doctor. In verse 12, it says, on hearing this, Jesus said it is not healthy. Is it not the healthy who needs a doctor but the sick? But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call, not to call the righteous, but to call sinners. Jesus, in these two verses, just above the parable we're going to learn about today, presents himself as a doctor. And then when you go to verse 14, Jesus presents himself as a bridegroom. See, in verse 14, he says, how can the guest of the bridegroom mourn while he, the bridegroom, is with them? In the study today, Jesus says that I'm like a bridegroom at a wedding. And when you are a bridegroom and there is a bride and there is a wedding, there is joy and there is celebration. The time comes when they will be able to mourn when the bridegroom leaves, but right now the bridegroom's here. So please enjoy the party. Now, the scripture here tells us before the parable is taught that one day the disciples of John the Baptist come to see Jesus. Now, understand at this point, by the time we get to Matthew chapter 9, that John the Baptist had pretty much turned over his disciples to the Lord Jesus. John the Baptist knew his role, that Jesus was Lord and John was not. In fact, John talked about when he met Jesus at the at the River Jordan for baptism, he looks at Jesus and he says, you need to baptize me. I, I don't need to baptize you as you're requesting. He also said of Jesus to John the Baptist, I am not worthy to stoop down and to tie the, the strings or the thongs on your leather sandals. John the Baptist also said concerning of Jesus that he, Jesus, must increase and I, John, must decrease. So these disciples of John the Baptist, transferring their appropriate loyalty to Jesus Christ, have a simple question for Jesus. And you see it there in verse 14. They ask Jesus, why is it that we and the Pharisees fast, but your followers don't? And Jesus responds in this way. He basically says, when you go to a wedding, do you mourn? When the groom and essentially the bride are there, no, a wedding with a bridegroom is not a time for mourning. It's a time for celebration. Basically, he makes the point that while I, Jesus, am right here, celebrate, be filled with joy. There's one day when me, Jesus Christ, the bridegroom, will be leaving you, and that will be a time to fast and mourn, but not now because the bridegroom is here. So enjoy the wine, enjoy the cake, enjoy the party, enjoy the celebration. Jesus is saying, don't throw water 
on a bonfire. Let the fire burn. It's a time of celebration. The king has come. One day the king is going to leave and you can be sad and fast. But right now, enjoy the fact that you are in the presence of the king. Don't turn out the lights because the party isn't over. And then what he does is he throws out some stories. He throws out some illustrations, some allegories for the people to ponder. And there are two specific illustrations. You see this, there are two illustrations that Jesus uses. Illustration number one is found in verse 16. It involves a a patch of new fabric being attached to an old piece of fabric, all right? Look at verse 16. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Um, When I was a little boy, it was the early to mid-1960s, Having more than just one pair of play pants was a luxury. It would have been a big deal. You often would just wear, I would, just one pair of play pants that would get rewashed every day or so, and I'd wear those to play around with my neighbors and friends and play football and basketball, and I would wear those jeans out, especially at the knee. And my grandmother, who was a very good seamstress who could really sew, she would oftentimes, I remember as a kid, she would would sew a piece of cloth on my knees of my pants. And then I would remember that it would over time, as I continued to wear those patches over the knees and wear the jeans and they'd get washed, there'd be a time in which that patch would shrink, as Jesus is illustrating, and it would begin to fray against the, the place where the hole was in the, in the main pair of pants around the knees. Uh, I can also, just a side story, remember that my mother, who was a musician and not a seamstress, my mother, and some of you identify with this, discovered these uh, iron-on patches. You ever remember, you're old enough to remember those, these iron-on patches that you would take out of a, contain, a, a, a package, and then you'd get an iron and that you would either on the inside of the pants or on the outside of the pants, you would heat up and there would be like this adhesive and it would cover your holes in your pants. These things were painful. It was horrific. It was terrible. But that's just the way that it was in the early to mid-1960s. Oh, the pain. Oh, the nightmare. Here's what we know to this day, as it was back then, over time, clothes can shrink. In Jesus' day, no one took a new unshrunk patch and sewed it on top of the old garment's hole. The reason being because over time, the patch would shrink, pull on the old hole, and make the old hole worse. Here, I think, is an important parallel meaning to what Jesus is saying here in this parable. Jesus illustrates that he came to this earth with salvation for eternity, for permanency. Jesus did not just come here to patch things up for a while, just to let them fall apart all over again. Jesus came to do a new, fresh work Jesus came to do a new, fresh thing. It was to be new. It was to be creative. And Jesus came to do that new and creative work in your life and mine. And when we experience new life in Jesus Christ, as we are a new creation in Jesus Christ, there isn't some framework or patchwork that is attached to the old man, the old woman, the old person. We are made new. We are new creations. We didn't need to be concerned about a legalistic fasting as the disciples of John the Baptist were referring to. If anything, what was happening in our lives with 
this is we, we, we become a new cloth, not attached to the old, but we are new. We are, we are not there as a patch up. We are there as a freeing up of grace, a new creation in Christ Jesus. What a beautiful thing to remember in a brand new year. New life, new creation. But the theme of newness does not stop here because we come next to the, we come next to the second illustration, and that is in verse 17. And the second illustration here is about wine and wineskins. Wine and wineskins. Look at verse 17, would you please? Here Jesus is speaking, and he says, Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins so that both are preserved. Now, we know in our culture what wine is, and if you're a, if you're a fan or student of uh, historical artifacts, you, you know what a wineskin is, but we don't think about wineskins today to put wine in. We think of bottles or barrels or vats of which wine is fermented and processed. But we only think of wineskins. Let me, let me speak to you about wineskins from a commentator that provides, I think, some good handles for us to understand what they were and kind of introduces to us where Jesus is going in this parable. This commentator said that wine was often stored in animal skins that were specially prepared for that purpose. The hide would be uncut except at the legs and neck and sometimes would be turned inside out. The leg openings would be stitched, closed, and sealed, and the neck would be used as a spout, which was tied as a leather thong or string. Old wineskins would eventually dry out and become brittle, and if someone then put new wine into them, they would crack and burst, spilling the wine out. The only suitable container for new wine is a fresh wineskin. In the same way, the only life that can contain true righteousness is the new life given by God. When a person repents of their sins and receives Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Final comment by this writer. The pharisaical, legalistic, external, self-righteous system of traditional Judaism could neither connect nor contain the ministry and message of Jesus Christ. Consequently, that system had only one option, and that was to oppose and seek the elimination of Christ, which is what it did. You can't put new wine into old, uh, into old wineskins. Jesus refused to pour the new wine of salvation, new life in him, into the old wineskin of a pharisaical system that was tied up in law, that was tied up in rules, that was tied up in established religion. The concern of Jesus, if you continue to think through this theme, is that we find new life together with one another, and it happens in new wineskins. This is the, the kind of life in Jesus that means there, there are always ways, there's always freedom to, to put new wine into new containers, into new context, into new forms, and the freedom to develop new forms, new wineskins to, to put the precious new wine of salvation, the gospel message, into. I read this week an article that is simply entitled, Why the Church Needs New Wineskins, by a man named Verlin Fosner. And I thought this was very good, what he said. Allow me a few minutes to, to read this to you, and I hope that it will capture you as it captured me. He writes that missiology is the equal blend of theology and sociology. However, most church leaders went to seminary to become theologians, not sociologists. It is not unreasonable that most would prefer to focus on theology 
to the exclusion of sociology. This oversight has caused us to drift toward the ditch of being so heavenly minded that we are no, no earthly good. Now, don't get me wrong, he says. The church is of great good to Christians, but because of sociological inattention, we are almost invisible to the unchurched. Only one, one only, pardon me, needs to look at the 85% of churches that are stalled and declining in our country and the 96 church closures each week in America to see that we are ineffective in reaching new and unchurched populations at our gatherings. The church in America does not have a theological problem, but we do have a sociological problem. As long as we continue to understand our declines through theological lenses, we will continue to misdiagnose our situation and will continue to consider solutions like more prayer, more moving of the Spirit, or better worship. And while all these things are wonderful, he writes, and I believe in them and practice them all, they are not the reason for our declines. Now, follow this a little further. Jesus told an interesting parable that I find is misunderstood all across the land, the parable of the wineskins. In the story, Jesus made it clear that new wine cannot be put in old wine bottles because when wine expands, it will break the skins and spill the wine. While most understand the principle, we need to meditate on what the wine skin represents. Almost done. He says the pressure that forced Jesus to tell this story was that he was doing things with his disciples that ignored the inflated rules of Judaism. When the Pharisees confronted him on it, he explained that a new wine was coming, a wine that would need to be housed in different structures than the 613 rules and ways of Judaism. Jesus' point, when new wine pours out of heaven, a different sociological culture would be needed to house or contain the new wine. Thus, Jesus was developing a new wineskin, that is a new way of functioning to handle the new wine. That is the gospel message of Jesus. I think that's profound. And it got me to thinking in preparation of this message with the parable and staying true to what Jesus is teaching and putting in the context of what we have experienced here in our church over the last year. There's now about a year of COVID, nine, 10 months of COVID behind us. And we don't know how much of COVID is still before us. But in that 10 month, 11 month period, we have developed here at Eastside new forms of worship, We've created new platforms. We have created fresh expressions. We have, by God's grace, created new vehicles and new ways to serve. We've seen a year of 2020 where our church that celebrates the new wine of Jesus Christ and his gospel, we've been able to put that new wine into new wineskins. And, and I, I don't think that we necessarily saw that coming, that 2020 would be a year of massive new wineskins for us. We didn't know, for instance, that at Eastside Mosaic, our campus in Smyrna Marietta Line there on Austell Road, we had no idea with Eastside Mosaic back in 2019 as 2020 began that we would become, in partnership with Storehouse Ministries and with the Noonday Association, we had no idea that we would become, in a 10-month period, the largest deliverer of meals per week, foodstuffs to family per week in all of Cobb County. Oh, we had hoped in 2020 that we would be able to take care of maybe a 100 a families, a, a a month, but things so ramped up, and thanks to Adrian Kutzer and our incredible team down there, uh, you know, it's just been amazing what has happened and the volunteers that have come from Eastside and Lower Roswell and the work we've done and how our budget funds that 
that ministry to take place there. It's been amazing what has happened. And we, we, we just saw the Lord create a new wineskin. We, we, we thought we would see 100 families a month that we would feed, and now we, we, we provide every single week boxes of food to between six and 700 families per week. It's been amazing. It's so amazing. You may not know this. I haven't shared it publicly, but it was in the local papers that the Cobb County Board of Commissioners, in their final meeting of 2020, looked and they had money left over from the CARES Act that Congress had approved earlier in the year. They had $350,000 left to take care of the underserved in Cobb. And those commissioners gave in their vote all $350,000 remaining in that CARES Act fund to Noonday Association, Storehouse, and Eastside Mosaic to buy food in 2021 so that we can continue to serve the underserved. I hope you got that. By the grace of God, we have been able to build a new wineskin through Eastside Mosaic to the poor, to the underserved, and those people are told that God loves them when they come and that we're here for them. Given opportunities, we share the love of Jesus with them and we are there week after week. We, we Imagine a county of 800,000 people. Think of all the established charities that have taken place and yet overnight, this new wine skin was built to contain this new wine to reach the underserved in our community. New wine skin. We, we, we didn't know a year ago that we would provide medical debt relief to hundreds of Cobb County families. As we worked with RIP medical debt and we raised some $35,000, they were able, as the mission of their organization, we, we explained in that process that they could go and negotiate with Wellstar and they could negotiate and buy debt, pennies on the dollar, for people who were burdened with medical debt in the midst of COVID. And that $35,000 that you gave in the early days of COVID, because this was something we were doing last spring, RIP Medical Debt turned that into a purchase of medical debt in Cobb County for hundreds of families, totaling $3.5 million. That's a new wineskin. And all of those who received help for their medical debt in Cobb County, received a letter from RIP Medical Debt sharing them that with joy and with gratitude to God, it was Eastside Church, Marietta, that did that very thing. RIP Medical Debt, that's a new wineskin. A year ago, we did not know, in January of 2020, we, we did not know that we would almost overnight have to become a virtual church. We did not know that our church services and life groups were, were, were going to have to be adjusted and transformed. And we had no idea that we would begin to see within like a three to four month period, our, our, our three to four week period, pardon me, our, our services in this room decline and at our other campus, Mosaic, Eastside Mosaic decline as we exercised social distancing and everyone was trying to find their way. And what we discovered is that we, we, we found more and more people watching us online to the point now that every week it's between 1,500 and 2,000 people, sets of eyeballs that actually watch us. And live, we went from a church of eight to 900 people that were engaged pre-COVID, we found ourselves becoming a church live. It got down early on around 100, 120, and it's grown back to live services where people got back to between three and 400 every week. We had no idea that we would have to come up with a, with a, a standalone 9.30 and 11 o'clock and a 6 o'clock that would connect with audiences and constituencies. 
But this team rallied together, and under God and by his grace, virtual church services, life groups being done online through Zoom, and through other ways of ministry to each other, the Lord allowed us to create a new wineskin to put the new wine of Jesus in 2020 in place. New wineskin. We had no idea of new wineskins would, would, would begin to include parking lot gatherings. We, we had no idea whether it was related to Halloween or to Christmas. We, we, we didn't know uh, life groups gathering together in parking lots. We didn't know, but we got creative and the Lord allowed us to have a new wineskin to deliver his message, to disciple people, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We didn't know last December, as we were beginning 2020 and ending 2019, we had no idea that churches across the country would experience some 30% drop in attendance. They would experience some 30% drop in their giving. We had no idea that that would lead to us having to eliminate positions. We had no idea that we had to reorganize our children's ministry, our student ministry. We had no idea that we were having to sit apart from each other, wear masks, take temperatures when you come in the room. We have, we, we've done massive reorganization in the last year. And what that has been for us has been a new wineskin because here's what we know as we look at Eastside, the church is rolling on. Our church is rolling on and we thank God for it. We have had a year of, of new wineskins Touch just a few of them. A year of, of creating new wineskins, of, of creating new opportunities so that they can hold the precious wine of the Lord Jesus Christ and the life that he gives. And in 2021, only God knows the new wineskins that we will be asked to build. But we will do that. We will build new wineskins as to what happens into the future, into the containers, the platforms, the services, the structure. We will build new wineskins because we don't want anything spilt to the ground. If we have structures that aren't relevant anymore, we need to, we need to, to, to graciously do away with them and build new structures to replace them so the so sociological realities will allow us to be relevant with our theological relevance of Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. So what 2021 holds, we do not know. Anyone who tells you what it will hold, they are not being honest with you. But I do know this, that as our elders and as our leaders continue to seek the Lord and try to study the trends of what is happening in the culture, 2021 will give us an opportunity to build new wineskins because we don't want any of the precious wine of the Lord Jesus Christ to spill to the ground. We don't want to miss incredible opportunities. So, beloved, more change may be required of us at Eastside in 2021. And I'm delighted to say that Jesus gives us the freedom to do just that. If we're not careful, we get caught up with things and can almost become religious features of our own within Baptist life or evangelical life or Bible-centered life. We need to make sure that we stay fresh, that we get more relevant, that we create containers and opportunities and ministry opportunities to share the love of Jesus. Always remember this, the skins, the wine skins contain the wine. And if the wine is left in an old wineskin and not transitioned to a new wineskin, the wine will split the old skin and the wine will fall to the ground. The skins conserve, conserve the wine. What are our wineskins going to be in 2021? I can answer there, the Lord only knows. Here's the story. Jesus Christ came, and when he did come, as we see here in this parable, he did away with the old, and he brought the good news. And the good news is, is this. Would you listen carefully? 
The good news is that Jesus Christ died for your sins, went to the cross, shed his blood on that cross so that you can receive him in your life and you can receive the forgiveness of sin, something you can't do for yourself or I can't do for myself. We can't, we can't forgive ourselves. We can't save ourselves. We can't redeem ourselves. Only Jesus can do that. And so today, where you are right now, would you pray to receive Jesus to give you new life, new wine, new grace, become a new creation in a brand new year? Pray with me, would you please? Please pray with me. Dear God in heaven, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died for me, shed his blood for me, that he only can forgive me of my sins. So I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. So come into my life, Lord Jesus. Save me from my sin. I turn from my old life into the new life that I discover in this new year. I follow now Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer with me, I sure do wish that you would do this. There is a book that we have here. It's called Your Greatest Adventure. If you will simply look at the lower part of your screen there, you'll see an email address. If you prayed this prayer, I would love to send you this book, Your Greatest Adventure, Taking the Next Steps in Your Faith. It's written to help you get started in a new life in Jesus Christ, you have become yourself receiving Jesus, a new wineskin, receiving him. And now we want to help you grow in grace and knowledge of him. God bless you for being with us today. And from all of us here at Eastside, Happy New Year. <music> 